A misconduct hearing has commenced into the death of Roberto Villa. Mr Villa was put in a chokehold by PC Anthony Spiteri of West Yorkshire Police at the Edgerton Hotel in Huddersfield in December 2018. We spoke about this on the 10th of June because Spiteri was initially told he wouldn't be facing criminal charges over the death but at the time was being reviewed by the CPS. Back in June, a misconduct hearing was halted due to new evidence being presented in relation to the injuries that Mr Villa had received. The new evidence had then kick-started a review into the case by the Crown Prosecution Service. Ian Skelt KC, acting on behalf of West Yorkshire Police, said that three medical reports had been carried out by a Dr Hope. The initial reports had suggested the neck injuries sustained by Mr Villa could have been caused by either the chokehold or medical intervention by paramedics at the scene. However, a third report by Dr Hope in February 2022 concluded that the deep bruising to the neck and damage to the voice box were likely to have been caused by the chokehold. Mr Villa had been suffering from mental health problems following the death of his mother. He had been living at the Edgerton Hotel for several weeks and friends descri described him as kind, funny and generous. But in December 2018, Mr Villa was described as being intoxicated due to taking cocaine although I have yet to find who described him in that way. Mr Villa is said to have assaulted a receptionist at the hotel and police were called. PC Anthony Spiteri arrived and a struggle ensued. Spiteri put Mr Villa in a chokehold for 72 seconds. It's claimed that he fell unconscious, fell ill and a short time later died in hospital. The misconduct hearing being held in Wakefield heard how Mr Villa resisted being arrested by PC Spiteri and a female colleague P.C. Sanderson, who was described as an inexperienced officer who was said to have taken little part in the arrest. P.C. Sanderson had used parva spray to try and incapacitate Mr. Villa, but it didn't seem to have much effect. Villa is said to have kicked out and kicked P.C. Sanderson as he fought with Spiteri. Spiteri said that while Mr. Villa was handcuffed, he started to pull away from him and they ended up in a tug of war that Spiteri, a trained police officer with colleagues, didn't think he would win against a man in handcuffs. Spiteri told the hearing that he recalled trying to effect a takedown, but then his arm got locked over his shoulder, which he said resulted in Mr Villa having more control of the situation, adding that we were bouncing off the walls. I had no control at all. I was scared. I had never been in that situation. I was quite panicked. <clears throat> he was trying to bite me in that scuffle. He had his hand under my body armour. His hand was grabbing at my skin. Spiteri said that during the struggle the handcuffs came off Mr Villa's left wrist which had caused him disbelief at his lack of pain perception. He was stronger than me, he said. I recognised the cuffs as a weapon. I believe he was going to start throwing punches with that handcuff to the right hand which would cause serious injury. Although far less serious injury than somebody's death, I, I would bet. Spiteri said he had experience in wrestling and jiu-jitsu and had previously attended martial arts gyms and when Mr Villa began to get his, to his feet, he felt he had to act. He then carried out what he called a partial chokehold. Under questioning, PC Spiteri said he used a restraint technique which is discouraged by police training experts because of the danger he had faced. Spiteri responded that I believe it was justified. The level of threat, the loose cuff, a man that was stronger than me, under the influence of cocaine, the effect on his strength and ability to resist and fight. I was in a moment of survival. It was proportionate. The alternative was being smashed in the head with handcuffs. He was asked why he continued to hold the chokehold on Mr Villa after five more police officers arrived, to which he replied that at that point he was not restricting Mr Villa's airways and was not applying it properly. Spiteri had had a previous encounter with Mr Villa after friends of Mr Villa called police because he appeared to be having a breakdown and had taken cocaine. PC Spiteri attended that incident where it said that Mr Villa told him that he would bite his face off. Clearly a cop with an ego if you ask me. Probably couldn't do anything the previous time to teach Mr Villa a lesson for the threat but the next time he had reason to go hands on and teach him a lesson. That's an opinion by the way, nothing more. The hearing continues and I will bring you updates when I get them.